The ninth doctor wakes up, curled into a fetal position on the floor of a cupboard. He stumbles out in a daze and is informed by a young woman, Linda Moss, that his disorientation is due to the effects of the transmat. Linda states that he has been chosen as the newest housemate. The doctor looks around, noticing the cameras, and then a computerized voice requests that he report to the diary room. To his disbelief, he is in the Big Brother house, live on channel 44,000. The voice reminds him not to swear. Astounded and annoyed, the doctor replies, you have got to be kidding. Rose awakens on the floor of a darkened studio, also disorientated by the transmat that brought her there. A man, Roderick, tells her to remember to do exactly what the android says. Rose asks what android, but a floor manager calls for people to take their positions behind very familiar-looking podiums, one of which has her name on it. As the round-headed android is activated, Rose realizes that it is the android, she is playing the weakest link. Jack wakes up and finds himself faced with two gynoids, Trine E and Zuzana, who offer to give him a brand new image, a la what not to wear. The two gynoids criticize Jack's clothing and comment that his style is very 20th century. A defabricator strips him naked in preparation for a fashion makeover. Jack seems to rather enjoy the idea of being nude in front of millions of viewers and comments that the viewing figures just went up a result. Meanwhile, the doctor tries, unsuccessfully, to find a way out of the house using the sonic screwdriver. Linda asks, nervously, if people on the outside watching like her and the doctor lies, reassuring her that people think she is sweet, which seems to please her. The amnesia caused by the transmat starts to clear, and the doctor remembers. The TARDIS had left Roxacorica Volipatorius and then visited Kyoto, Japan in 1336. They had just escaped from that and were laughing in the TARDIS control room when a bright light, the transmat beam, came through the walls and enveloped them. The doctor tells Linda that no ordinary transmat beam could have penetrated the TARDIS, which means this is not just a game, there is something else going on. He tells the camera that he is going to get out, find his friends, and then find whoever is responsible. Two programmers, a man and a woman, who are watching the games from a control room elsewhere, are puzzled at the appearance of the three new contestants it's as if the games are running themselves. When eviction time comes around in the Big Brother house, housemate Crosby is voted out, and she exits the house into a white corridor. At first, the doctor is puzzled at everyone's emotional reaction but is horrified when he sees Crosby supposedly disintegrated. The doctor angrily asks the others if getting on television is worth the risk of dying, but Linda and Strood tell him they have no choice. The contestants in this era are chosen at random from the Earth's population and transmatted up to any of 60 Big Brother houses playing simultaneously. Winning simply means they get to live. The doctor realizes that Rose was also caught in the transmat and is probably a contestant. To get out, he uses his sonic screwdriver to deliberately destroy one of the house cameras in order to be selected for eviction. In the makeover room, a naked Jack is quite enjoying his experience of having a makeover but is now faced with the two androids who decide that, quite apart from the fashion makeover, that he should have a face-off, literally. With various cutting instruments, including a chainsaw, the two androids are about to perform some gruesome surgery. They suggest that Jack would look good with a dog's head. But to the astonishment of Trine E and Zuzana, Jack pulls out a compact laser deluxe pistol from an intimate hiding place behind him and promptly blows their heads off. Soon the first round of the weakest link has been and gone and Rose, not being a native of the 2001st century, knows almost none of the answers to the questions pertaining to this time. She is more amused than upset at the situation until she discovers that being declared the weakest link at the end of each round does not just result in expulsion, but disintegration by the android. The contestants continue to be whittled down. One contestant quits and attempts to flee but is disintegrated with Roderick voting out everyone except Rose so that when it comes to the final round, he will win by answering questions that Rose cannot answer. He will then collect his prize, in the form of credits, courtesy of the Bad Wolf Corporation who run the game station. At the mention of the name, Rose recalls how the phrase, Bad Wolf, has been following them. From Gwyneth seeing it in her mind in 1869 Cardiff, the call sign of Henry Van Staten's helicopter, the Blade DRWG nuclear power plant, as graffiti on the side of the TARDIS in 2006, and a news channel on Satellite 5 in the 2001st century. She realizes that if Bad Wolf is in charge, then her presence has been planned. 
In the Big Brother house, the doctor cheerfully walks into the white corridor and waits as the countdown towards eviction ticks towards zero. However, nothing happens, much to both of the programmers' confusion. The doctor has guessed, correctly, that whoever brought him to the house wants him alive. He uses the sonic screwdriver to open the exit to the house and offers to take the surviving housemates with him. Strood refuses, but Linda, after some hesitation, follows. The house is just one room of several opening onto a larger chamber, which the doctor recognizes as that of Satellite 5, but a century later than when he was there last. The doctor begins scanning the other doors, looking for an exit and asking where his friends could be. Linda says they could have been transported into any of a hundred different games, all deadly. When the doctor tells Linda that he is a traveler, she asks if she could go with him. He smiles and agrees that it would not be a bad idea, but right now, they have to concentrate on getting out and finding out who controls the satellite. When Linda turns the lights on to reveal the logo of the Bad Wolf Corporation, the sight of it gives the doctor pause. In the control room, the two programmers decide to look at the transmat logs to see how the travelers got on board. However, the female programmer is refused entry to Archive 6, where the logs are kept. The controller, a pale woman hooked up by dozens of cables to the station, tells her it is out of bounds. The controller is constantly monitoring the transmissions that flow through her and muttering to herself. The male programmer tells her about the new contestants wandering around outside the games and asks for security measures, but she denies them, insisting that the travelers are no one, and telling them to return to work and alerting them to an impending solar flare. Jack has converted the defabricator beam into a ray gun, and he goes in search of the doctor, finding him by scanning for the Time Lord's Bacardial circulatory system. On an observation deck, Linda fills the doctor in on what has happened to Earth since his last visit. To the doctor's horror, instead of human development having gotten back on track, things have in fact become worse. When the doctor shut down Satellite 5, all information broadcasts ceased, the whole planet froze, and society collapsed. Humans are still a race of mindless sheep, endlessly watching the programming that the game station transmits. Jack finds them as the doctor frantically tries to access the computer system to find Rose. The doctor explains that the station is transmitting more than just games and that whatever bad wolf is, it is manipulating him, creating a trap that Rose is still inside. On floor 407, the final round in the weakest link does not go well for Rose. She loses the round to Roderick just as the doctor, Jack and Linda burst into the studio. When Rose runs towards the doctor to warn him about the android, it shoots Rose, turning her into a pile of dust. After deactivating the android, unable to understand that the doctor, Jack and Linda were trying to warn about the potential danger, and feeling threatened by Jack's anger and threats towards her and Roderick, the floor manager angrily calls in the guards after stating that she's calling security because they had no permission to be in the studio. Numb with shock, the doctor does not put up resistance when the guards arrive and take all of them away, despite Jack's attempt to threaten the guards before angrily shouting at Roderick and the floor manager that their stupid freaking game show killed Rose. The doctor remains silent when the guards process and interrogate the three of them, but when they are about to be transported to a lunar penal colony, the doctor gives the word. He and Jack spring into action, knocking out the guards, grabbing weapons and heading up to floor 500. In the control room, Jack and the doctor wave the weapons at the programmers, ushering them to one side. The doctor demands to know from the controller who is in charge and who is responsible for Rose's death, but the controller does not answer. The male programmer is nervous because of the large gun the doctor is carrying, but the doctor casually tosses him the weapon, saying he was never really going to use it. The male programmer explains that as the doctor is not one of the staff, the controller's systems do not recognize him. The controller was installed when she was five years old. She has been plugged in so long that her eyes have atrophied from disuse. All she sees is the programming. The male programmer also says that there is more going on at the station. Unauthorized transmats and encrypted signals have been going on for years. Jack opens Archive 6 and finds the TARDIS inside. He goes into it and activates the console, discovering something that shocks him. The predicted solar flare happens, and static floods the screens, blocking transmissions. The controller unexpectedly calls for the doctor, explaining that while the solar flare is happening, her masters cannot read her thoughts. They have been controlling her mind all her life, but she saw the doctor in the transmissions and brought him here, 
hiding him inside the games so he could find her. However, she cannot tell the doctor who her masters are, because she has been genetically altered to be unable to say their name. Her masters have been hiding and shaping the earth for centuries, growing stronger in numbers, but they fear the doctor. As the flare passes, Jack returns and tells the doctor that the TARDIS worked out that the disintegrators were actually part of a secondary transmat system. People have not died, they have just been transported elsewhere, which means Rose is still alive. Rose regains consciousness aboard an alien spacecraft, where a strange humming sound fills the room. She sees one of the inhabitants of the spacecraft approaching her, and she backs up against a wall in shock as she recognizes it, and cannot believe her eyes, she claims to have seen the creature, who presses its plunger-like hand to the wall, die. Back on the station, the controller gives the doctor the coordinates to where Rose had been transported, despite knowing that she will be revealing her subterfuge to her masters. As she shouts out the coordinates, the controller is teleported away. Materializing on the same ship that Rose has been transported to, the controller gloatingly tells her masters that they can kill her now, as she has brought about their destruction. She is promptly killed by an energy weapon. On the station, the transmat beam is traced to a point at the edge of the solar system. Although the screen appears to show empty space, there is another signal, transmitted by the satellite, that is shielding what is actually there from detection. These are the same people who installed the Jagraphis nearly two centuries before and have been manipulating mankind for generations, playing a long game. The doctor cancels the shielding signal and is greeted with an impossible sight, a fleet of 200 Dalek flying saucers each containing more than 2,000 Daleks, a force almost half a million strong. Both the doctor and Jack thought the Daleks had all been destroyed, but obviously, they have somehow survived. The Daleks open communications, with a lead Dalek ordering the doctor not to intervene with the Dalek stratagem or they will exterminate Rose. To the Dalek's surprise, the doctor simply says no. When the lead Dalek demands an explanation, the doctor defiantly tells them that he is going to rescue Rose from the middle of the Dalek fleet, save the Earth and then wipe every last Dalek out of the sky. The lead Dalek retorts that the doctor has no weapons, defenses or plan. The doctor taunts them and knows that that is exactly what is scaring the Daleks to death. The doctor tells Rose he is on his way and cuts the transmission. The lead Dalek states that the doctor has initiated hostile actions and another Dalek orders the invasion of Earth to begin. Many more Daleks gather for the invasion, all chanting their battle cry, exterminate, exterminate, exterminate. 